Hey guys, so I've had a few requests to kind of go through the basics of making an eye with a shader. So I'm going to do this as a series, but this beginning video is just going to be an overview of everything. So basically this is an eye tutorial for people who don't have much free time. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, I'm just going to show the general steps that I take from you know creating the eye to having a shaded version in a head. Uh, the head will be just imp importing and the textures, I'll just be using ramps for now, just because again we want to just go through the basics here. So let's get started. So to begin with, I'm going to start with a cube. I know that sounds really weird. I will demonstrate why in a moment. But basically, with creating an eye from a sphere, you end up with a bit of an issue, which is if we create a sphere, which is how most people would start an eye. And then let's just rotate that forward. Hold J to snap it to different axes. There we go. And I'm just going to assign a, a blin to both of these. Go to surface, uh, blend, set it to black, just so we can see the reflection. So when I smooth these, we're going to end up with quite different results. So I'm just going to scale this up for a moment. The issue that you get when you create a sphere uh, with an eye, or an eye with a sphere even, is because you got this pole at the tip, you end up with this quite horrible, like, I don't know how well you can see that on recording, but it's basically like it kind of pinches in. You can minimize this by deleting some edges. So let's just go through and delete some edges. I'm only going to do half of it just because, you know, that's all you need. Do that. But that doesn't truly get rid of it. It just makes them bigger and softer. So the easiest way to kind of avoid this is to have an actual grid topology. So let's just remove that for a moment and go back to the cube. So now we've got an issue though, of when you smooth a cube, it's not actually round. So if I just smooth this, let's say three times, it's not actually perfectly round. You see it's, it's slightly flat on top, flat on the sides, flat on the bottom, flat on the other side. And it's the same from this side too. The easiest way to fix that is with a sculpt deformer. So if you have this cube directly on the origin, so in zero, zero in the world, you can just go to deform, create a sculpt deformer, and I, I like to scale that up, uh, up just to make sure that it's actually affecting the whole cube and scale that back down. So that will now be actually a perfect sphere. And you'll notice how we don't have that artifact at the front. That artifact matters just because if we're doing refraction, which with an eye we are, it will very slightly affect the way that the eye refracts, which means that your pupil might get like a kind of Rick and Morty type effect where it's all distorted. Not the prettiest looking thing on uh, most characters. So. We've got this general cube. I'm going to smooth it one more time. Not because I have to, just because I want to in this case. I'm going to just quickly grab a sculpt deformer. Uh, deform, sculpt. There we go. So the average size of human eye is about 2.3 centimeters or 23 millimeters. That is regardless of age as far as I'm aware. So all I'm going to do is just check the grid. Each grid is one centimeter unless you change your preferences. So this is two centimeters across. So I'm going to make this slightly larger and that will now add up to about 2.3. And I'm literally just kind of doing it by eye, um, no pun intended there, just to kind of see how much it's going past the grid lines. In fact, it might actually be a bit too big. Cool, so we've got that. Now we need to create the um, bulge of the cornea. So if you don't know the names of the eye parts, basically the white of the eye is called the sclera. The kind of bulge at the front that you can see through is called the cornea. The iris is the bit you're probably most familiar with, which is the color of the eye. You know, if you've got blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, that's the iris. And then the hole in the middle is called the pupil. And I really hope you know what a pupil's called. Um, but yeah, so we just want to create that kind of bulge of the cornea, just because without it, the eye won't really refract properly. So. There's many ways to do this in terms of making it correct. One kind of fault with this method is that you don't get topology that supports it. I uh, gotta love the lovely sounds of London in the background there. But what I like to do is just create, uh, like grab the frontmost vertex, which you can find by looking where the grid intersects and do something like that. So let's just quickly go into my soft select settings and that should be all right, actually. Let's just do that. And there we go. So that's now got the uh, the bulge for the cornea. 
And again, like with it being quad topology, we will get slight issues here, but it's just it's less noticeable than the issues that you'd get from the pinching at the front. So we've now got this mesh. We now need to start creating a iris. So the easiest way to start with that, I find, um, is to create a cylinder. Delete the whole mesh except from the top. Grab the outer ring and extrude that. Something like that will do. And then just delete the middle section. Uh, let's just do that. Cool. And then let's just modify center pivot. Then I'm going to use the absolute transform tool. You can find that just up here. And I'm going to set this to be at 0, 0, 0. Just so we know it's in the middle of the scene. Then we'll rotate it facing forward. Also, if the pace of this is slightly too quick for you, if you're fairly new to Maya, don't worry. I will be hopefully doing some kind of um, like slower pace videos where we break each part down into its own video. Uh, but yeah, so sizing the iris, as a general rule of thumb, I like to make it about half the size of the eye, which is roughly what I made the cornea bulge. Uh, something like this, we could make it slightly larger. Something like that might be okay. We're not going to make anything particularly realistic in this lesson. And then if we just go like that, we can see that we've got an iris in place. Now, modeling the iris, we can continue obviously from here. We can give it a thickness, which I heavily recommend. The reason that I recommend to give it a thickness is one, for subsurface scattering. But two, if we don't give it a thickness, we end up with a perfectly sharp pupil, which doesn't really exist. Like It's going to roll off into the pupil. So it will feel more natural if we give this a quick extrude. So obviously just gave away what I'm going to do. It's going to quickly extrude that guy. Bring it forward and now when we smooth this it kind of softly rolls off on the inside edge let's just grab that see now it's like not a perfectly sharp line i am going to add some more topology just so it doesn't smooth so strangely also going to add a loop here and here and there we go so now that like quite nicely rolls into the middle we could spend some time kind of shaping the iris uh, one thing a lot of people like to do is to get the eye and do this. So let's just do that. Set this to, in fact, I don't need to do that. Let's just pull that back. Some people like to do this. You can do. Um, I think I'll, I'll keep it there now that I've done it. The Basically, pushing the eye back will force a sense of depth into the eye, which is something that helps eyes feel quite characterful, quite organic. So, you know, that, that can be quite kind of good to do so let's keep that like that for now and then in the kind of full video we'll go through that in a bit more depth and a few more options so last thing we need to model is a pupil and you may be thinking well why do we need to model a pupil because we've already got a hole in the iris so this is one of the limitations with this method is because we can see through the cornea and there's a hole directly in the iris light can get directly to the back of the eye which can happen in real life as well but I generally find with rendering, it, it lights up a lot more than really it should. Probably just because, you know, in real life, the eye is full of fluid, which we don't have, and there's a lot of other stuff going on. So we just need basically something behind this iris to kind of black out the pupil. So I'm just going to create a plane, because it doesn't need to be fancy, it literally just needs to cover it. Set the plane to be just one face. Hold J to rotate this forward and just put it somewhere like that. It doesn't have to be huge. It just needs to cover the iris, uh, cover the pupil hole, and get it as close as we can. And there we go. So that's our modeling done. For a basic level, obviously, we could spend a lot more time on this. There's a lot of things that we could definitely add. You know, there's, there's a bit of like ruffle on the iris, which we could do as a separate mesh if we wanted to, but I'm going to leave that completely out. So let's quickly name these meshes. So this mesh is going to double as the sclera, which is the white, and the cornea, which is the see-through bit. So I'm just going to pick one for the name. So I'm just going to call this one uh, Cornea Geo. Oh. Cool. Then this one is the iris. So let's call this iris Geo. Then pupil Geo. Cool. Then we're just going to group all these. I'm going to call this demo I group. Cool. So we're going to need to start blocking out some UVs. Obviously, the pupil is going to have UVs already. 
So, you know, it's, it's just a plane. We don't even really need UVs for this guy, to be honest. But just scale it down. I don't like UVs being on the edge. So, to UV these in the most simple way possible for this pipeline, what we're going to want to do is just do a front projection, then cut the back of the eye off. So, it's easy enough to do. All you have to do is select your mesh, uh, which technically does have UVs, but they're not the kind of UVs we'd want. So, let's just um, go into... I'm holding shift and right click to get the context menu up. Then I'm going to go to mapping, and then play now map Z. Now we've got front based UV. So obviously going to stretch towards the outside, we will be fixing that. So I'm just going to open my UV editor, grab this guy, and then I'm going to cut this middle section. Unfold the front. Well, that's the back, actually. Just move that off to the side. Unfold the front. Lay that out on its own. Then let's just get it oriented at least. So that's correctly oriented. I'm going to scale that down. And then the back of the eye we're not going to see. Um, so I'm just going to move that over here. Now, here's a really important note to make. This method is quite, not hacky, but this isn't necessarily a perfect eye. You wouldn't always want to do this because if you need to see the back of the eye, for example, if there's like a shot, there's like a gory shot or something in your film, then you want to make sure the back of the eye is the same size. But for this like kind of hacky method where we'll be texturing using ramps, this is the easiest way to do it. So that's UVs for this guy. Then let's check out the iris. So the iris is simple enough. We just do the same thing. So I'm going to go into mapping, play on map Z. And then for this guy, we're going to have to cut it in the middle here and here. Although we could cut it at the back as well. So let's do that actually. So get in the UVs, cut edges, just unfold both of these. Cool. So which one of these is the front? This guy. So move him off to the side. Let's go on down. This guy is unfolded, right? He is. Cool. I always like to scale him down. As I said, I just don't like UVs being at the edges of my UDEM. Move this over here. There we go. So we've got the back of the iris still has UVs. They're just obviously like completely the wrong size. So this is, again, the limitation is the UV the texel density of these is completely wrong, which can cause issues depending on your pipeline. So just be aware of that. But this video is kind of aimed more at kind of beginners to intermediate who want to see, well, I say this lesson, this method is aimed at beginners to intermediate. Um, this lesson is definitely aimed at intermediate just because I'm not slowing it down for anything. Um, but yeah, so pupil, we've already got UVs on. So we just need to freeze transformations and delete the history and all this just so the meshes are stable. Let's go modify, freeze transformations, and there we go. So now we've got a model with UVs. So I'm going to assign a Lambert to all these. Lambert 1. Cool. And then we can get started on shaders. So we're going to create a corneo material. So let's just start with a Arnold surface shader. This method will work with whatever you want to use, but I'm going to use Arnold just because it's what most of the people watching this will have. I'm going to call this Cornea uh, Mat. And then I'm going to set, um, go to Transmission, and let's open the Hypershade. So the way I like to do this, as I said, I like to use ramps as much as possible when making ice, just because it's, it's simple. Um, if you wanted to do something more detailed, like some of the stuff I do in my streams, then naturally you're going to want to, you know, crack open Mari or Substance Painter and actually paint some maps to make it look good. But in this case, we're just going over the basics and, you know, the fundamentals of how to approach it. So let's just graph this guy. I'm going to copy the name to the shader group and then add SG at the end. And let's create a ramp. So this ramp is going to drive the transmission of the shader. The transmission is refraction, basically, so the light can pass through the object. So if I just plug this into, in, plug R into transmission, and hit six on the keyboard, you can see how now we can actually see through the eye. The issue is, is that this ramp is not doing what we want at all. This ramp is, you know, is going bottom to top. So what I like to do is I like to set my ramp to none to begin with, just so I can see a perfectly sharp line. And then we're going to set this to be a circular ramp. So having a circular ramp, what that will do is allow us to kind of 
you know, draw from the front. So we can do something like that. Now, I'm going to have to do a fair bit of stuff here. Because it can be a bit finicky to get the position of this right. So, let's grab you. Cool. And then I'm just going to lower this color slightly just so I can see it. So we want to make sure that the, the edge of the iris is not visible at all. So let's just move that forward. And then I probably will scale the iris up slightly, actually. Just so it really isn't visible. Because you don't want to be able to see gaps on the side. That's always going to cause issues. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to name this ramp. Let's call it ISO for isolation. Cornea ramp. So that's just saying, okay, like this is just masking the ramp. It's not specifically because of the um, refraction. It's not specifically for the cornea. It's just to kind of... It's, it's a mask for later use if we want to use it in other things. So, now that I've got this, one of the things that we're going to have an issue with is the fact that this is now perfectly sharp, which we do not want. And the reason we don't want that is because one of the key things that a lot of people miss in their CGR is they make the blend from iris to cornea way too sharp. And it just, it looks really bad. And it's a trap I've fallen into for years and years and years. Once it was pointed out to me, it's something I've never really gone back to doing. So the way we can kind of fix this is set this to linear, which will naturally blend it a fair bit, but we don't want, you know, such a massive blend. So I'm just going to pull this back. And that just allows us to get a very slight blend. So I'm going to go into the color of this guy and just change that. So let's say it's like bright red for now, just so we can really see what this is doing. So yeah, as I move this, it's going to blend more or less. You just want to make sure you've got some of a blend. We we also need to make sure we really don't see the iris. If you see the sharp line, pull this black forward. And there we go. So that feels about right to me. Maybe let's pull that a little bit further forward. Now let's take it a little bit further back. There we go. So that'll do for now. So now we've got a cornea. If we do a test render with this, it's going to look awful, but let's just do it anyway. I'm going to set this to white for a moment, although I will be talking about that too. And let's just make the sky dome visible. So save my scene and open my render view. And let's kick off a quick render. There we go. So I'm going to need to set the ramp that I was using to pure black or pure white even, if it wasn't already set that way. Yep, let's set that's pure white. And there we go. So now you'll see how we can actually see the iris now, which is you know, obviously quite helpful. So we could play about with the size of the iris if we want to. One nice thing with this method is you're never locked into the size of the iris. So all you have to do is scale the iris up or down and then just move these ramps. I'm just going to keep it like this for now, just to kind of get on with the lesson, because we're already at 18 minutes. So now that I've got to this stage, I'm going to quickly assign a material to the pupil. So let's just go into here. So let's just select the people directly, turn off the render. And I'm just going to assign a AI constant, if, or AI flat, sorry. And then set this to black, call this pupil map. Just because we don't want shading information, we just want something nice and simple. Copy that into the shader group. And then kick off the render again. And now we've got a black pupil. So one of the issues we've got now though is that the eye is incredibly flat and there's quite a lot of issues to be honest. Uh, we also need to change our refraction and all that stuff so we'll get into that. But what I want to um, address right now is caustics. So I'm not going to go into depth on caustics because it's way too complex of a lesson and frankly I don't understand them well enough to feel confident teaching it. So I'm just going to go into the material that we've got and to activate the caustics all we have to do is go in the material, go down to advanced and turn on caustics. And what that will do is allow light to kind of focus behind an object. Caustic effects, the most famous one is like under a pool, when you see all those like shimmering lines, that's a caustic effect. And they are incredibly important to get an eyes. To make a beautiful caustic is incredibly sensitive to lighting. So with this dome light, which is a bathroom, it's not going to work. So just be aware of that as an issue. I'm also just going to go into my uh, specular. I'm going to set roughness down to like much lower value because a roughness of 0 0.2 is also used in the transmission, which means that the iris gets blurred. So one thing though that you may have kind of noticed already and one of the byproducts of this method that I quite like is that you naturally get shadowing on the um, 
you naturally get shadowing based on the lighting direction, which is incredibly helpful to make eyes feel a bit more dynamic. We got darker on the side where the sun is coming from because it's shining on this side and not this side, just because it's angled slightly backwards. We could enhance that effect by kind of making that eye a bit more concave, but for now we're just going to ignore that. So what's the next issue to talk about? Well, the next one is the term white of the eye. This is hugely misleading, and I find that it's another one of those errors like having an incredibly sharp iris that gives away CGI's. The white of the eye is not white. It's more like an orangey, pinky thing. It can be brown. It depends on race to a certain extent, but generally speaking, it's never white. Even though like whitest eyes will have a tint of blue, there'll be something else to it. Do not have purely white eyes. It's just not going to work. So what I'm going to do is set this color to a very desaturated very desaturated i'm also going to lower the value slightly because pure white doesn't exist either or pure one in value doesn't really exist either but just doing this to the eye color without context of a head it won't really make much sense but it is kind of there is kind of helpful so just make sure you're never having the pure color and let's put that reflection back in so Let's kind of do this in a bit more detail now. So I'm going to open that hypershade and I'm going to reverse that ramp because what I want now is for the cornea to mask out the sclera, which we can do because where this is black is the sclera. So if, if we just reverse it, that will give us the opposite of this where it's black, uh, black at the front and white at the back. And we can plug that into subsurface scattering. Let's plug that into there. And in the subsurface color, I'm going to create a new ramp. So let's go ramp texture. Same stuff as before. I'm just going to set this to be a circular ramp. Um, let's go with, oh, look in the wrong place. Let's go circular. I'm also going to set this to none because again, I find it incredibly helpful. And we're just going to get that and plug it into the subsurface color. We're also going to plug it into the diffuse color or base color. Let's just move that over. Cool. So we can now use this ramp to kind of figure out where our values need to go. So I can just pull this white forward until I reach the edge of the iris. So I now know this is where the iris ends. I can put another color back here and just figure out where the middle of the iris is. So actually, it turns out I got it about right. So all we're going to do now is set this to linear or smooth or exponential. I'm going to go with smooth in this case. And let's add some colors. So I'm going to keep this quite subtle just because, again, this is like a disembodied eye. It's not going to look very good. And I'm also going to massively change this guy, but we'll fix that in a moment. So let's get that off white color again. And then at the back of the eye, let's go with something a bit more red. Something like that. I want to keep it quite subtle. Something around there. I think the front of the eye is not the right color yet. Let's make it a little bit more saturated. And then one important note to make here is because we've got a UV seam at the middle of the eye, we need to make sure that we don't push this too far back. So if I go like this and then move this further back, you'll see a seam occur where the back of the eye is getting the full color so that you see this like sharp line here so we need to make sure that this is always in front of where that uv seam happens cool so let's just set that again to a more natural color and i'm not going to spend long adjusting colors because i feel you know you know how to adjust colors and at the front of the eye i like to do a darker color and you won't really see this in most cases it'll very subtly blend in i just think it adds a little bit of something to the eye we can also pull that further back. If you watch my FK Twigs series, I did go over kind of, you know, why I darken the front of the eye. Um, even though it's like the cornea, you can't see it, but it means that when you blend it in, it blends into a more natural color. Cool. So I'm going to go into this reflection, tint that down a bit just because it's a little bit too dark. I'm going to increase the roughness slightly. And then something that I haven't done yet, which is incredibly important, is I need to change the IOR. So IOR is short for index of refraction. This is the kind of the amount that an object affects light. Like how much does it bend light as it goes through? 
a low IOR value, like air is 1.001 or something like that. Water is 1.345, something around that value. Plastic is 1.5, diamond is 2.4, and so on. That probably means nothing to you if this is new. So the way that I like to show it is I go to a kind of a side view like this one. And then if I set this to a high value, you see the iris get more distorted. And then if I set it below one, obviously it glitches out. But setting this to one is basically the same as having transparency. Like the refraction isn't actually changing the light at all. We could hide this and that pupil won't move. In fact, I'll do that to see how the pupil doesn't move at all on the screen. Whereas if I increase this IOR and then hide it, the iris is moving. So the natural value to use is the same as water. So I'm going to put 1.3345. I can't remember the actual value off the top of my head, but that's kind of a more accurate value for you know how much it should be refracting. So we got something like that. Now let's get into coloring the iris. In fact, let's quickly adjust this color because I'm still not quite happy with it. I'm just going to increase the value a little bit. I don't want to do point. Uh, I don't want to do one though. That's 0.95. A little bit less saturated. Cool and slide this a little bit more to red. Let's set that to, let's go to nine. There we go. So let's get started on the pupil because we're getting towards the end of this lesson. Again, I'm going to like kind of keep everything incredibly simple and I am stopping to explain some stuff. I will do that in a lot, a lot more detail in the separate videos. But for now, let's just quickly grab the iris and I'm going to assign a new material, assign a standard surface and let's call this one iris matte. Again, copy that. Grab you, SG. Cool. So now we can set a basic color. So let's just go with brown eyes. In fact, let's just do it in this. Something like that works for now. So probably a little bit red, but that's fine. So one thing that is worth quickly mentioning is that the iris does have a specular. I'm going to pretty much gloss over that to, uh, for now, just to kind of keep things a bit more simple. So let's just ignore that. I'm going to set the IOR to that of skin, which is again, water-based 1.34. I'm going to create a quick ramp. And this ramp will be the eye color. And I'm also going to create a layer texture, but I'll explain why in a moment because this is one of those things that is, is kind of a hacky fix, but it's worth mentioning. So let's just drag that into subsurface color as well. And we can add a little bit of subsurface when we want to. I'm going to create a ramp. And you probably guessed we're going to be using a circle ramp with no interpolation. I'm just going to drag that into the color. Cool. So let's drag you all the way forward and we need to find where the different values are. So what I like to do in this sort of case is just set you know, black values or blank values even and pull that all the way forward. So let's find the inside of the eye, which is there. Our UVs are slightly off center, but in this case, yeah, it's, it's easy enough to fix. We can just pause this, go into the UV, select it again, because sometimes that bugs out. Yes, that's just slightly off center. So let's just move that over. There we go. There we go. So get this guy, find the outer eye. There we go, there's the outer eye. You can see that line kind of creeping in. Set this to, let's go with linear and what I generally like to do is kind of darken the inside, which this will, you'll barely see this. It'll very slightly darken that just because the interpolation. This will be our kind of main eye color. So again, I'm not going to spend much time on these. I'm just going to get them, you know, vaguely where I want them. And then this outside color, let's just set that to the same, but way darker. Something like that will do fine. Cool. So you may now be wondering, okay, well, why have I added this layer texture? And that's for one little trick that I like to do, which is add a kind of forced shadow effect. This is something that a lot of people do. Um, I just like to do it procedurally. So all I need to do is create a new layer. 
The left is the top, that's something I used to get confused on all the time. And I'm going to set this to multiply. And now, let's create a ramp. And if you guess we're going to do circle, you're actually wrong in this case. This is the one ramp that I don't do as a circle. So this one will handle darkening the eye for me. So I, again, I'm going to set that to none. Find out where the midpoint of the eye is, about there. Then set you to black, you to white. Move you over there. And then bring that all the way back and set this to linear. And what that will do is just darken the top of the eye for me. Now I can find you know wherever I want to put this, just in case I balance it out. And that will kind of force a little bit more depth into the eye. We can change how much that is kind of, you know, the strength of that by either reducing the color or increasing the color, I guess. Or we can just go into the layer texture and change the alpha here. So we got just a handful of more things to do. One of them is to set up subsurface on the eye. So let's just go to subsurface. And then I guess we'll try a lower radius. So let's go 0.25. And we're starting to get our colors back now. Um, I think actually about 0.25 is working okay for me. It's it's good enough. It doesn't need to be pretty. Uh, the iris, I don't know if, did I turn on subsurface? I did not, okay, cool. So we're just going to grab this guy again, plug him into subsurface. In fact, it's probably worth plugging this guy into subsurface. Oh, we've already got our color in there. Okay, let's ignore that. So subsurface white up. Then we're going to set this to random warp v2. In fact, I should do that for this guy too. Oh, I already did. Cool. Scale all the way down to 0.1. Maybe even lower, 0.05. Because the iris is incredibly thin. And again, I'm just doing something quick and hacky. And there we go. So last thing is displacement on the eye. So one of the issues, again, that I get with a lot of kind of basic eyes is that the... I just realized we've got a bit of a seam in there. Quickly fix that. But one problem I get with eyes is people make them too circular most of the time. So what I really recommend is that you don't do that. And one of the easiest ways to do it is just with a bit of displacement. So we're going to go into the hypershade for the cornea. We're going to create a displacement. Drag you into displacement shader. We're going to create a set range node. This set range will remap our displacement so that it doesn't inflate the mesh too much. If you don't understand that, that's fine. Maybe that's a, a lesson for a different day. And let's create a AI noise. Cool. So we're going to go into the value. And the value, I'm just going to set the old min and max to 0 to 1, and then the new max to 0 0.5, and the, old, uh, the new min to minus 0.5. And then if we start a quick render, once I've put on some subdivision, let's go with two subdivisions should be fine. It's already pretty high polygon. And obviously each subdivision you add is adding four times the amount of polygons from the previous subdivision. So this goes up incredibly quickly. And let's just quickly start that render. Yeah, so as a thought, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, I think the size is about right, though, in terms of like the, the general size of these shapes. So I'm just going to go into displacement, and let's just move that over there. And I'm going to set this to like 0.1 scale. And what that will do is just very slightly distort the eye. It will make the, uh, what's the word? It will make the reflections not so perfect, which is obviously quite helpful. And then, yeah, it's just a case of kind of going in and refining these colors as much as you want. So we could go into that iris color again. So the iris color is a bit dead to me, to be honest. And let's just go make you a more saturated, brighter color. That helps immediately. We can add a bit of blackness to the outer eye by just pulling this in. Something like that. That will get a bit more contrast in there. And then, yeah, that's the basics, really. So if you wanted to push this further, obviously there's there's a ton of stuff you could do. You could add a bit more surface break up to the eyeball itself. You could go in and actually texture these, you know, add some veins or add some break up to the eye iris itself, because the iris here is incredibly bland, like really bland. 
I think it's probably worth me quickly throwing a, a kind of map on there to kind of show you what it should be. So for example sake, I'm just going to quickly go onto Google and let's move that over. Watching a documentary about Triton. Um, so let's search the Oliver Wolfson eye. So the Oliver Wolfson eye is probably the most famous eye texture out there. And it is this guy. This is probably like the most used eye texture. And for good reason, it's a really nice eye texture. Uh, fundamentally, this lesson is over, by the way. This is just kind of a, a bonus thing, just quickly attaching a, a texture rather than using ramps, just to show you, you know, this method does actually work. Um, so let's just go and drag this onto the screen. I'm going to download the image to my desktop, which, by the way, is, is terrible practice. You should always save it to a project folder. But for now, this is fine. Let's call this iTemp. Cool. And then I'm going to create a file node, file texture. This is going to get my iTemp. And let's drag that. So this is going to have the wrong UVs for now. But that's not a big deal. Yep. Yeah. So let's quickly kill that and change the size of the eyes or change the size of the eye UV even. That gives us kind of a basic eye texture. We could now plug that in to our ramp that we did. So rather than plugging that in, let's just change the color of U. And that will get our darkening effect back in if we want to use it. And I'm going to very quickly change the subsurface radius on this because I think we're losing too much detail. There we go. So we got a basic eye. Now again, you can still darken this if you want to. I could add another multiply on top. We need to spend some time to kind of fix this, but that's, again, no big deal. We can literally just go in and change our UVs. So it's going to UV. I can tell that this tutorial is getting to like a rambly point now, so we'll kill it off pretty soon. But let's just do this. Scale that down. I'll scale it up, apparently. And the back is getting the... Um, the other kind of UVs. We could overlap the back mesh because I guess this is just the back section getting the wrong thing. Um, but for now, we'll just leave that. Again, just get this section and move you over there. Line that up. And again, this is like the worst workflow for this sort of stuff. You, you want to make sure you avoid doing this sort of stuff. And there we go. So I guess this is just reflection kind of bouncing off. You could create bump maps and all that sort of stuff as well, but we're going to completely ignore that. So just to kind of see how this looks in a head, I'm just going to temporarily hide this, show FK twigs, and that's in about the right place. Obviously I've kind of moved it ahead of time. Let's just move demo eye back and up. Something like that. And then let's just tilt it slightly just so she's not looking straight on. There you go. Obviously, the size of the iris is way too small. Me again, just going back and editing. I couldn't leave the eye the way it was looking at the end with the tiny iris. Um, this is you know, more accurate of how it should look. Uh, we just need to add kind of more veins and other stuff to the cornea. Let's just lower that scale a little bit. And yeah, so all I've done is change the size of the cornea ramp and kind of you know tweak the model around to get the actual look. And then yeah, this this is kind of the actual final result from this video. I just couldn't leave it where it was. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.